Good morning, folks. Looking at our star in 211 angstrom shows the dark coronal holes, both north and south. I hadn't expected a positive aspect to the end of the current quake watch, but we sure have got it up there. And after two days of only slightly increased seismicity, we are looking at an uptick. The full readings list shows a flurry of readings in 6 magnitude range, starting in Fiji in the Pacific Ocean. We've also taken an above average tremor in China. And then again this morning, Papua New Guinea rang in 6 magnitude range fairly definitively. USGS has used lower magnitude readings for all of them. Even with the downgrade, this is still a moderate uptick. Earth took a gamma ray burst yesterday. It came out of Andromeda's portion of the skies. Solar flaring is relatively low, only one solid sea flare. The departing spots remain quiet while these incoming groups are not only quiet, but their magnetic mixing is unstable and they may have some decay in mind. Meanwhile, some slightly above average speed to the solar wind, peppered with intermittent density spikes, is continuing to push Earth's magnetosphere into instability. Other than that, it was a calm day on our star. The plasma filaments remain stable as well, including the big one now turning away from our planet. Something fascinating. DGCVN is a tiny star that's made a big splash. You see, the largest solar flare ever detected from our sun was in the X-20s in 2003, and we estimate that the limb blocked much of it and it could have been an X-45, but NASA has now watched DG fire an X-100,000 solar flare details in the link below. Shifting to the climate where this is about the 200th paper from the last three years explaining why natural variability is the primary cause of two profound climate factors often attributed to anthropogenic sources. Since the IPCC admitted nearly two decades without any significant global warming, the publications have turned the tide even if your news channels refuse to do so. We're looking at Europe. Flooding has been wreaking havoc from Spain and France to Austria and Czech country. The issue is the amount of rain falling in such a short period. Both there and in the U.S. we've seen the short-term downpours nearly defy the rules of weather. doesn't appear ready to stop either. Even with the primary low-pressure system still atop Iceland, there's a line of moisture coming from way south in the eastern Atlantic up across northwest Africa and dropping onto the main continent. More of those same alerts today. Tropics Watch begins with Fanfon headed to Japan. We're pulling for the eastern shift out of Asia to keep pushing the storm off the coastline and away from the island nation. Across the sea, Rachel is about gone, but we are still expecting formation and naming of this developing low, either today or tomorrow. Meanwhile, the counterclockwise driving low in the U.S. is shifting north into south-central Canada, bringing some of the last heat waves on its eastern edge before an October chill sets in a good portion of the next few weeks. Meanwhile, though... We've got to keep an eye out for the severe storm warnings, where that heat and moisture flows up the convergence. Last but not least, still got a few flood and wind warnings down under and in New Zealand. We got potential earth spots and shots of our star to close at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. Central. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.